playing again, part two. Okay. Catch you up. In case you didn't see the first video, go watch it. But, um, two months ago to the day, um, back in June, I mean, back in July, on July 15th, leave it back as far as mid June, myself and half of my clan didn't know that four of our clan members, our, our friends, our best friends, were stabbing us in the back. I just happened to be the number one on their shit list, so I took the brunt of it. And the rest of the girls and our guys followed down the list of shit. Um, one of them we will never speak of again. We will never see her again. She's dead to us. In fact, I don't think she was ever truly our friend, which makes me question all the magic we did with her. All the circles we did with her. Everything we told her, you know, as secret and in confidence to her. If she hasn't been our friend for so long, what does that do to the energy she brought into our circle? Think about that. One, the other one, one other one, I don't know what's going on with her. I'd love to be her friend again. I'd love to have her back in the circle again. I don't know what she's going through right now or why she did what she did and why she let it happen because it's really not in her nature to do what friend number one did. I don't know what's going on there. Friend number three. She was chosen to be the person that the other two, or at least friend number one, confided in. And she believed her lies and believed in everything and that we deserve, me and the other others deserve what we got. She has been, you know, conceded to us and said, well, I fucked up. Friend number four. We don't know what's going on with him. He knows what he did wrong, much like friend number three. But he still can't figure out that friend number one is as bad as we see her as, as bad as she is. I'm not trying to say that because, oh, she, she, she hates me because I mean she's a terrible person now. I won't go into detail. But friend number four needs to figure out what friend number three figured out a while ago. So now we have friend number three who has come forward and apologized and wants to make up for all her wrongs that she did to me and the others. Friend number four will be patient with him because he's also been through a lot much like me. Friend number one is gone and I hope we never see her again and friend number two we're hoping and praying that she also realizes what friend number three is their life. <clears throat> Moving on. Now, I talked about in the first, the part one video, making sacred, how to make sacred space or reconsecrate after a fight. Okay. After a fight or after a coven meltdown or after you lose friends or whatever, it's advisable that you cleanse your house in sacred space. You might do that. The second part is, after these friends of yours leave the circle, especially if they've done something terrible, and it wasn't just a mutual breakup, you know, I'm really not, I'm not feeling our friendship anymore, I don't really want to be part of the group anymore, now I'm not talking about that. Talking about when a friend or a cousin mate completely betrays your trust and does the most immoral, evil thing you can even imagine a friend would do. And again, I won't go into detail. This friend, number one, I don't know why she thinks, it's probably just her delusions, you know, trying to make herself feel better about herself, saying that the rest of the group is doing bad magic against her, etc, etc. No. So not only this, she's telling people she has no business telling about the fight that happened and about all the crap that went down. So now she's not only making herself look, out, look like the victim, she's making the rest of our group look like to be where the bad guys, and we, we don't deserve her at all. She's so much better than us. Okay, here's what happens when situations like this happen. Spiritual self-defense, like I talked about in one of my last videos. Now, it's a little different, because in the spiritual self-defense I talked about, you would be running into people on the street, people at work, or a family who might just be giving you crap. 
Well, this is the kind where you're being accused of doing magic against somebody, especially, okay, this is what I'm talking about. This kind of spiritual self-defense is the kind you need to do when somebody who you've been connected with, especially magically, a kind of magical person, there's no longer that connection, but yet you still have some sort of, I don't know what you call it, some sort of connection still. You have to break that connection, but the connection you have is not, we were friends once and it's hard to let go, it's a negative thing. They're trying to get to you, they're trying to make sure that you know that they love that you're upset, that they are doing this to hurt you, or something to that effect, whatever it could be. You need to be the strong one and break it. Now, what you're going to need to do is get your coven. If you're a solitary, you should be fine if you've always been a solitary. If you want to get some of your closest friends to help you, because it'll probably strengthen the work you're going to do, be part of a coven. Get the coven together. Do all the cleansing and stuff that I mentioned in part one. Do it a couple of times. Do it again on the full moon, again on the, the new moon. Do it as many times as you need. You feel you need to. To cleanse the house, to make sure that all the bad energy you said people have left is gone. Do what you need to do. Do candle magic. I don't know if anybody does candle magic, but here's what I would do. Get some crystals. Hang on, I'm being Skyped right now. Alright, I'll get back to them later. You know, get crystals. Cleanse them to each other. We have a clan crystal. It's this big. It is a massive, probably a 10 pound massive thing of quartz that is our clan stone. And it has all of our energy in it. Everybody who's part of the group. Now what we did was we got together and we cleansed it under the last full moon, the, um, the August full moon. We cleansed it with a tincture of herbs and we purified it again with our new energy. So that all the bad energy that people who were who were part of our group before, they're not in the stone anymore. It's the clan stone, they're not part of the clan, we get rid of them. What you also want to do, you know, is completely erase, especially their bad energy, but in certain cases, you want to erase them entirely from your clan structure. Now with spiritual self-defense, make sure you do some sort of spell. A blue, I mean it's not for banishing, black for banishing, but I don't have black or white, depending on what you want to do. Here's what we will probably do. We will do a strengthening. We've done these the past month and a half since all this happened. We've done strengthening rituals. We all get together, relax, we put the music on and we meditate together. We talk about what we want to do for our clan reaper. We want to start over. We want to strengthen ourselves after the fight that happened. You know, we lit the right color candles for what we want to do. You know, blue is for patience and peace. We wanted patience while we got through this, and we wanted peace in the group. Blue might be good. <laughs> Green is also for friendship and for success. We also need that. Purple is for psychism and psychic, you know, stuff and for um, like intuition. We need to strengthen our intuition to make sure this doesn't happen again. So, like, get your plan together, strengthen yourselves. Make sure your third eye is open. Make sure your third eye is the most powerful eye on your face. So that you can see anything bad coming. Make sure your throat chakra is clear so that you can vocalize anything if something bad happens. You need to make sure that you have the strength to deal with it. Use your voice. Clean out your heart chakra. All your, of your kind need to do this. Your cousin needs to do this. Make sure that all the bad stuff is gone and that you're just going to focus on healing your group. Strengthening and healing your group. <laughs> That's another thing. You're going to need to do a lot of healing. Closing the doors for a while. That's what we've done. We close the doors. We're going to still have rituals and parties, but we're not going to invite our other friends. It's just going to be none of us in the clan, clan only. Close the doors. No more parties for a while. No more doing crazy stuff for a while. Take the time to do it. You've basically gotten over a magical plague. 
do as much healing as you need to. Okay. Um, what we would do is we would, before I came back to school, the last two weeks before I came back to school, we would literally sit in my room for a couple of hours until midnight even, just listening to music, singing, rebuilding our bond so that we can start over just us. Now, just so I don't run out of time, which I think I might already have, I'm going to let you guys go. Um, I'm going to probably do some more of these soon. Listen to what I've said. Because shit just happened to me, and I don't want anything else to happen to anybody. It's the worst feeling ever. Alright, see you later.